Hello everyone and welcome to another Fire Carry Guide. Today is our fourth installment covering the Tier 7 Here You Carrier for the Japanese line. In this little mini-series we're talking about the Japanese carriers, similar to how we did previously with the newer American carriers, about ship setups, captain skills, that type of stuff, and how we would then play it in a random battle. So with further ado, let's go straight into our uh, game. Here we are, this is the Here You. Now, here you being tier 7, it's kind of in the middle of all the kind of uh, brackets you can go down, you can go up, it's quite kind of scary. So it's kind of a mixed match of what kind of games you will come across. There are numerous of carriers at tier 7, so before we go into the details, uh, the general guides, we're going to talk about the modules, we'll talk about the exterior, we'll talk about the captain skills, and then we'll go into a random battle. And that being said, if you haven't already watched the previous videos, we've covered the whole show Zuiho Ryujo. Go check them out if you want to find out more about them. But otherwise, let's get straight into this. So, uh, under modules, the here you come stock one two two. So just like the Rujo's upgraded setup, that's now the stock for the here you. You definitely want to upgrade this with free experience if you can to two two two. The second fighter squad is really powerful, and that's more important than actually upgrading the fighter plane first. So you definitely want to upgrade the uh, hull first. Sorry, the, uh, the 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 flight control module to get that second fighter plane. Then you want to upgrade the the um, fighter plane itself, followed by probably then the dive bombers after that and then the hull blast. The final thing you would upgrade is the 312 setup. 312 here you is for, it's not even really for ranked, it's more of a competitive setup. Um, you could use it in some ranked scenarios, 312 has some uh, potential, but for me personally, I always play the 222 setup unless there's like some special tier seven super fighter duel competitive thing going on. Upgrades, same as the usual, we want the increased damage, so we take air groups mod one for our planes. We, uh, by damage, I mean fighter guns damage. Uh, we take the reduced um, fire and flooding. We don't basically want to be on either of those. That's the chance to be put on fire and flooding. We take the fighter health because we now got two fighters. We want to have as much health as possible if we go into MAA, if we're going to fight enemy planes. Health is just incredibly helpful for us. Uh, ammunition also very important. Lots of strafes, lots of exit strafes, so that's huge. That's why I always take air groups notification too. We don't take any of the other ones. We don't need the AA, we don't need the secondaries, we don't need the prep time with the surfacing time. We, we just want the health and the ammunition. The last one we take is reduces uh, the time that we are on fire or we're flooding. It's primarily for fire because that's quite hindering to the car with the mechanic that you can't take off if you're on fire. Damage control system modification too, uh, it's. In terms of ammunition consumables, I always take damage control party two at this tier. Uh, carrier sniping at tier seven is definitely a potential uh, there are lots of kind of dangerous carriers out there in the bracket. You can also come to double carrier games. And for me, uh, at tier 7 and onwards, I will always take damage control party too. Even though the activation time is still 30 seconds, the reload time of being 60 rather than 90 is it's pretty huge. In terms of exteriors, because I have a 19 point captain, pick whatever flag you want. Camouflage wise, I'm going with the captain experience flag. You can take uh, ship experience or whatever it works if you're working your way through this. Signals. The, the standard uh, competitive, like uh, I'm being serious setup is the AA signal, the speed for your ship signal, increased flooding and increased flooding and fire. Those are the four default. Now, because you can only take four signals on the aircraft carrier and I have like this captain uh, commander experience uh, hull on, I'm actually playing slightly differently. I have not taken the speed signal. I have not taken the extra flooding and fire chance and I have chosen instead to elect to take commander experience and more commander experience signals uh, from the economic and special section just to maximize the amount of uh, elite captain experience I can get because I have a 19 point captain. But that's just my personal preference. You would probably take experience if you're leveling up through the Hear You. Right, captain skills. Now, the here you has been in ranked games before, and this is my ranked uh, setup, which would also be the competitive uh, setup. If we're playing competitive, the modules would be three one two rather than two two two, but ultimately the captain would not change. We're taking uh, aircraft servicing expert because we want the extra health uh, from the planes. We servicing time is a benefit, but that wouldn't be the primary reason why we're taking it. Torpedo arm and expertise is very good for cross dropping with torpedoes. Um, it's very, very good for going after destroyers and that type of thing. Where in ranked games, it's, it's you know particularly effective. Uh, you know, going after the destroyer with the guy who can go for the cap. Uh, otherwise, it's useful for maneuverable targets. If you only had a single torpedo bomber wave, you might not take torpedo acceleration. You might go with something else like adrenaline rush. But in this instance, I always take a torpedo acceleration for the technique that I use to drop uh, ships from behind from the side. On the three-point skill. 
I do not take torpedo armament expertise. This is more of a ranked competitive uh, flavor in that, yes, I could go into randoms and I could get away with taking torpedo armament expertise instead, similar to what we did in our usual video, but I don't feel the loading time of the torpedo armors... Uh, in, in randoms, it would be better because you're, you're getting more offensive attacks at, right? But in competitive, you don't want that. You want the self-defense because you're tier 7, because you can't be threatened by enemy planes or you can be spotted by enemy planes and shot at by other people. I don't want that, so I'm going to maximize my AA suite so I take basic fire training. For the four-point skill, we take air supremacy, two fire planes, two dive bombers. That's four extra planes in total. That makes the fires absolutely mandatory to air supremacy. But the dive bombers, it's always an extra perk. We do extra scouting with it, or we can do extra chance for hitting with more bombs, more fire chance, that type of stuff for the air supremacy. So it's a no-brainer. That's definitely our first four-point skill. For the 11th point skill, we go back to dogfighting expert. This increases the ammunition capacity. You've got more strafes. But because we're at tier 7, all other ships at tier 7 have either 7 or lower planes, except from the Saipan, which has tier 9s, it is absolutely essential that you take Dogfighting Expert in the Hiryu if you want to be competitive against the enemy Saipans. So Dogfighting Expert, absolutely, you must take. So that's 11 points. Because we took Basic Fire Training, our remaining 8 points, we're going to put into Advanced Fire Training and Manual Fire Control for AA Armament. Our concealment is 11.5. That's a little bit high on the Japanese line. The sweet spot between 10 and 12, but Personally, I don't feel I need the concealment. If I get ship detected or plane detected, but plane detection is 9.9, .9, so you're still okay in that respect. But if I get ship detected at 11.5, I can stay slightly further back or alternatively gives me plenty of time to react. Oh, who is spotting me? Let me go deal with it. What do I get in return for not taking uh, concealment? I get a really strong AA suite. Our long range guns are very powerful. And factor in pushing the range up to six kilometers and then factoring manual fire control for air armament it saves you if your fighter planes are occupied no ammunition waiting to take off and you are jumped by enemy bombers kaga has really high alpha strike uh, which is tier seven or saipan could be sending his six torpedo bombers in to attack you or it could be an enemy ranger with his you know big bulky planes or it could be an enemy hear you whatever it takes the point is you can focus down the most important plane torpedo bomber first maybe the fighter maybe the dive bomber whatever it takes and you will get plane kills before they drop you if you can make it so that you're even running away from the planes in a straight line and they're having to chase you from behind you will kill off planes you will mitigate damage and you will survive a sniper attempt even from two different carriers and that is the benefit of maximizing your self-defense with your AA, and that's why we don't take the concealment expert. And that's just a personal preference. Um, you could, theoretically, you could drop the AFT, I like the, the manual fire, and you could take concealment and push down your, your C detection, but I don't think that's worth it. You could not take basic fire training and move over to torpedo armament expertise. That would lower the uh, kind of uh, the damage, because you're lowering the damage by 20%, and then you're also lowering the double of said damage of the manual fire, so the A would drop quite significantly in the self-defense in order to get faster torpedo bombers to come out. But you can argue swings and roundabouts how you would go about it. Personally, I go with AA self-defense. I don't like being sniped, and I'd rather snipe enemy people. One other small caveat. The Hear You only has tier 6 torpedo bombers. It does not have tier 7, which means these are the same torpedo bombers the Zuiho and the Ryuzhou has. And you are now tier 7. Now, against lower tier plane ships, that doesn't really matter. Against higher tier ships with defensive fires or AA, we could come across tier 9s. It's entirely possible. Choosing to use your torpedo bombers, you have to be very selective and you have to be careful. Now, the here you does have a lot of plane reserves. It goes up to 72 planes compared to the Rusers 48. So you've got a lot of reserve, you've got a lot of capacity, you've got three waves of each plane type, but you need to be careful how you use torpedo bombers. The technique where we use one torpedo bomber and one dive bomber on attack to flood a target, wait for him to damage control party, then send another torpedo bomber and another dive bomber to bleed him out, might not work with the here you depending on what you're attacking. For example, if you're going after an enemy Bismarck, don't expect to do that. Just attack him with everything you've got if you have to attack him because the AA of a tier 8 or tier 9 uh, ship will wreck the tier 6 torpedo bombers. So that's the one weakness of the Hiryu. In terms of fighter control, the only the Saipan is stronger and that's only because it can exit strafe and strafe mechanics. You will beat the Saipan on a single click on click engagement with dogfighting expert, which is why we said it was very important to take it. So there's a lot of caveats, a lot of things you have to be aware of, but the Hiryu is an incredibly powerful tier 7 carrier and I personally, in my hands, find it to be better than the Saipan. It's, it's better bombing, it's better scouting, its fighter control is weaker, but only just. But if you play it well enough, I feel that you can outplay Saipan. 
Uh, it's definitely better than the Kaga with its only two tier 6 fighter planes. Can't outbomb it, but it can definitely out fighter control it, which means it can possibly then stop the bombing control. And it can definitely out bear scout because the Saga's only got one dive bomber. In terms against the independents, the Hiryu's uh, multi two fighters is better than the single uh, ranger, sorry, uh, better than the ranger single fighter uh, and, and its bombing capability because the ranger doesn't get armor piercing dive bombs either. So, anyway, that by said, this game. Single carrier game, Hiryu versus Hiryu, that suits us just fine. Lots of battleships at tier or below. We're also at tier, that's great. In terms of defensive fires, the Algeri, maybe the Duca, maybe the Badoni have defensive fires. We can go also after the tier 8 destroyers, cross drop them as well. Maybe the Benson and the NFT might have a defensive fire, you might have a kind of a build captain, unlikely. So, first things first couple of options on the start you could if you're going to scout if there's heavy enemy AA or heavy enemy planes like Saipans and all that type of stuff you could actually choose to launch a dive bomber first drop the payload like so away from your ship and then tell it to fly off now that means you've dropped the payload dive bomber and you're flying off immediately and you're going to go scout really really quickly see what the enemy's doing see where they are maybe trying to lure their planes away if you want to in this particular instance it's not justified to do that so I'm going to do fighters first then torpedo bombers then dive bombers. I'll get the fighters out into the middle, I'll give a little bit of uh, protection to our destroyers so that they cannot be bombed by the enemy uh, CV, and then we're looking to see what capture points are under contention. Is A under contention? Is D under contention? Is there a destroyer? You can tell because you know the, the capture point isn't ticking around or maybe it's ticking in the enemy colors red. And in that respect you can say, ah well the destroyer is probably over here. And then you can go try and spot him, and if you can, and the enemy fighters are not in the way, or there's no defensive fires, maybe you can try and bomb him early on. In ranked games and competitive games, the carrier that's able to even just wound the enemy destroyer, force him off the cap, is being a huge impact on the game. Right. Let's see here. So, our team is partially splitting. Kagro Benson... Uh, Kagro's not going to be at A anytime soon, so we're going to go over to Delta and help our Benson. I'm going to send the uh, torpedo bomber there as well. And we'll maybe have one fire. I don't like. Okay, here we go. I was gonna say I don't like particularly sending fires into the unknown because I don't know what AA might pick it off. You know, maybe someone smart turn the A off. So anyway, air supremacy tier seven, right? So we know that this guy. Oh, he's not paying attention. I don't think. Though. Nope, not pull that off. Oh, he's he's yeah, he's actually choosing to engage. Right, fine. I'm gonna exit strafe and I'm gonna grab him. So. Oh, that was that was brutal, capital B brutal. So what happened there was that I realised that he wasn't strafing or jostling for position. He chose to go after one fighter with two of his waves. Fine, I'll let him grab the one group. The two group is in close enough support. I'll strafe in, rather than losing the planes in my other one. I'll exit strafe with the one that's being attacked. So I know I'll lose a plane, but I'll grab two of his fire waves. Even if I just grab one of his fire waves and ganked it off, I still win two to one. But here it was. Two to zero, so it was uh, brilliant in our favor. The A cap was being threatened. I definitely thought I saw that, so I'm gonna look for the destroyer. Boom, there he is. Now he might be. No, he's close to the Algeria, but I think we can we can afford it. Now he's gonna try and smoke up, so I'm gonna try and catch him before he smokes. Oh, he's turning. Will he straighten up? He will. So this wave forced him to straighten up, which means you get clipped on the side. Boom. That's a flooding. Watch the damage numbers. Does he put the flooding out? He does. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Right, so damage control is now over. And the defensive fire from the Algerie messes up. And I flew my fighters over the Duca by mistake. Right, let's try fly away from the Algerie outside of his AA range. Good. Alright. Let's see if we can't get the Benson again now. Outside of the defensive fire. Two fires. Boom. And we'll fly away from the Algerie so we're not over his AA bubble. And we'll come back. We'll send our fires back try and protect our team. Benson will now double fire burn. I don't know, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, depending on his captain. So... Even though we didn't kill him, we definitely hurt him. He cannot now compete for A, he cannot compete for D, because if he gets spotted, he'll just get killed off. So he has to do like long range torping and that type of stuff. Uh, so if this was a ranked game, we'd already have a kind of advantage there. It'd be better to kill him off, 
and we can see the damage control he's actually managed to put his fires out but the point is uh, even just uh, inconveniencing him is good enough uh, now I'm going to send my fires back. Now I'm down two fire planes, one on each wave, uh, one by my own fault because I flew into the Duca's probably A level. Uh, I don't think the enemy CV is particularly well with these fire planes, but he doesn't want to go spot our Benson. So I'm going to fly over to our friendly lines. I think the enemy CV might actually even kill this Fuso. He's way off by himself here. I'm not sure I can get... I won't be able to get there in time, and he's, he's probably going to bleed out anyway. Now, somebody is actually capping the D, so maybe we'll see if we can't spot it. I need to be very careful here because I do have an advantage. Is he paying attention? I don't think he is. Normally you wouldn't strafe in, but he's not actually jostling for a new position and he's left himself open. And I can say, hey, look at this guy. Could be that he was focusing on bombing the... So I'm going to strafe him again. And there's no point clicking on him if he's not paying attention. It's like a gift in the mouth. Right, so boom, there's the Kagero. Please kill him. He's pulling his fire plane back now, but... Now the cargo is smoking up, so we forced the DD to smoke. That's fine. We've killed off two whole plane waves, which means the enemy uh, here you is down to his last um, set of fires. He gets three waves of each, right? So uh, we still have reasonable ammunition on our planes. Uh, probably not going to waste the strafe. I may just click on the dive bombers to prevent him from getting an accurate hit on our Benson. Once the bombs are dropped, I'm just going to pull out. There's, there's no point uh, clicking them. I want them to take their time going back. Right, what else can we do now? Big block of AA, no point flying our planes in there. Even if we are highest tier in this game, uh, it's not going to help. What I will do is probably move up to the middle, just so I'm closer to launching planes. And also I'm able to escape if I need to. Uh, the only threat is the Benson going down the middle, so I'm going to double check that just before I get closer in there. <clears throat> The Duca might have a defensive, the Algeria, you know, he does. The single destroyer we could pick on if we knew where he was. This is too much of a block. Uh, I don't honestly feel like I can go after that. And I'm not going to fly over the Benson because I don't want to lose any more planes just right now. I think... I'm watching the AA of other ships. We might be able to get the... Watch his position. <laughs> so he stopped moving and we got a good dive bomb hit. I was paying very, very close attention to uh, where he was. And uh, when he stopped, it was like, all right, boom, boom, I know where you are. I was even, if the dive bombs had hit, I was then going to aim the torpedo bombers into the smoke where the dive bombs had made connections to guarantee that kill. I mean, that's pretty much we could go with. Now, the, th the issue I've got is the Byron is potentially vulnerable, but there's a Duke right next to him. The Bedoni is not the greatest spot. These are his last fighters up, so he's already pretty beat up. We'll go after these torpedo bombers so they can't really kill our Benson. We're getting the cat back. I don't need to drop with the uh, torpedo bombers. And actually, the Fiji's beginning to move himself out of the kind of the big block there's no point clicking anymore i want to save ammunition because i'm quite low i could go after this fiji fiji's quite maneuverable uh he's tier seven and actually the enemy team even though even though we have like really good cap control well hang on a second here that's a bit of latency there we'll go after the torpedo bomber i think i'll try to get the fiji the fires over here his fires are not in position fiji's slowing down that actually works really well in our favor here uh the algae is going to mess with us don't turn away 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 turn in turn in turn in turn in i wanted to get away from the algae because i was afraid he would defensive fire on us oh good so he the he was too slow. He didn't accelerate because the, the the Fiji's are quite maneuverable. So we're gonna go over here. I may now have to actually reload my uh, fires. I probably should actually, yeah. So he's chasing. I got a AA range of six kilometers. 
and I'm going to bring the fighters over. I'm going to tag him to kill off his last fighter plane only when he enters the 6km range though. Boom, now. So he now he's inside my AA range. It's pretty strong AA at that. I'm going to grab him with the fighters. He can't do anything about it. I'm probably as close as I want to be, so I'm going to slow down. We'll kill him off and then land the fighters. And then we'll take off full ammunition, uh, full health. I'm probably going to be doing more spotting than actual bomb interception. Uh, but we'd probably also... I expect they hear you to still have some planes left over. Um, actually, wait. Cancel that. Right, there we go. Now the fighters are landing. We can get the dive bombers and the torpedo bombers in the skies. And while the fighters are basically preparing, uh, we're taking off for our bombers. We're looking for the enemy team to split up. Uh, and anything we can get our hands on. So maybe this Duke of York... Uh, maybe not the Algerie, although he's kind of low now, so that's a possibility. I don't like these guys pushing in. It's dangerous. I want this Benson to survive as well, and he's trying to push the Kagro because everything could fire at him as soon as he's detected, so that's also not the greatest. Actually, I'm going to reverse now, because I think I might need to run away, and I'm definitely going to have to do more work. I'll send one dive bomber after the Duke of York, see if I can't trigger fire, see if he doesn't want to put them out. I want to help with the Kagro, but I just don't have the planes at the moment. Two fires. Cool. Does he put that stuff out? He does. Right. Let's go. See if we can't hit him. Ooh, that's actually dangerous for me to go backwards now. Can I get a hit? Because the, the, the problem is that the... The close right now. He's turning this way, which means if we drop from that way, we might get a. Uh, yeah, he's, he's he's overturned now. He's he's you know he can't com he can't get out. He's too slow. We know he's damage control partied. We're gonna hit him as hard as we can. So that's one fire that's gonna stick. I'm gonna s send one fire to our destroyer. Flooding, 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 flooding. Thank you, flooding on the fifth one. So now he will die. I'll send one fire up to the New Mexico to try and save uh, any future bombing attempts, trying to prevent them flying around the Duke of York. I'll keep the other fighter over our Benson to uh, keep him, uh, give him eyes and he smoke, basically. Don't let anything come near him. Oh, right, okay. Well, I didn't get the kill of the Duke of York, but he, he died because of us. All right, we're going to stop now. Maybe go down this way. Uh... Benson, uh, there, oh, there he is. Th we need to keep spot the enemy Kagro, because the Kagro is going to be the problem for our Benson. And he's smoking up, because he doesn't want to get BB wrecked. And we'll just keep the fighter around there. We'll keep our one fighter near our friendly Kagro, just in case there's like any planes that come and spot him, that type of stuff. And we need to get, uh, I kind of want torpedo bombers first, so I'm going to wait for them to be ready before doing the DBs. Right, go. Cool. So... Torpedo bombers, then dive bombers. Fly away from the Bayern. Keep this Kagro lit up. Let our Benson kind of. He's basically defending it. By us spotting the Kagro, the Kagro isn't moving in uh, to uh, go for the cap. I'm going to fly around with the intention of doing this. And then grabbing the bombers. Ah, he's dead anyway. Okay, well there's no point being there, so I'm going to pull him back now. There were torpedo bombers somewhere, so I'm going to go down like that and like that. Okay, what do we want to do? Everything in the north is vulnerable, but the real crunch is down here. They're going to get D, so I want to try and prevent that. As long as the Sharon moves away, we'll keep A. That's not really too much of a problem. What I do want to do is prevent this torpedo bomber from spotting our Benson. Now the smoke is going to cause a bit of a complication here, so we might actually go for the New Mexico in the north. Or maybe we try... The thing is, we can definitely hit the battleships, and our, our Benson can definitely kill... In fact, he's even firing on them, so that's great. Single torp on the battleship as well, so that's good as well. We'll actually go down, and we'll maybe hit the Byron in the south. Alright, we'll keep one fighter over our friendly guy, we'll keep another one up the top. Boom. Okay, so there is the Byron, who is flooding, so we don't have to worry about him. Our Benson will probably deal with the Kagro, so we're going to go with the second Baron at full health. Does the enemy hear you? 
Now, we don't need to rush just yet, because he might... Alright, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait for him to come out. Because there's a lot of options here, what we can... Okay, get rid of that last fire. We could kill for the destroyer. I don't really want it right here, so we'll send one dive bomber after the Byron. See if we can't some fires and kill him off. I want his AA to die before we go after this the second uh, Byron. Fire. Okay, now, now that he's gone, we will go for the Byron. He's sort of turning away, makes it a little bit more awkward. He's turning in, no? He is, he's turning in, that's perfect. Now we need a flood and a fire. No floods. Okay, well, what's the damage numbers? Uh, 425. Numbers 89. Okay, so there's no fires. We'll send the torpedo bombers, and now we really do want to flood. Uh, we'll actually move, get closer as best we can. And we'll go spot the Kagura with our other fire group again. Boom, we got flooding, so he will now flood, assuming we're correct and that he used his damage control party. So there's the enemy Kagro. Boom, good torps. And that's the Byron dead. And that should win us the game now that we bump up to a thousand. Yeah, or will do very, very shortly. Now the Benson has sight advantage and has gun advantage of the Kagro, so we don't have to really worry too much about that. They made it into A, but they were too far away from caps to make any much of a difference. We've got fire control over here, so we don't have to worry too much about that either. And this is going to go well in our favor. You don't even need that DD kill. I mean, I could have maybe killed the DD, but I felt that would be better to go after the battleship, because that's the real threat to our destroyer. And the destroyer played quite well in that instance. And there goes the strength of the Hiryu, a game that was probably a loss. The enemy team was clumped up. Our team just pushed in, got all the caps, but then just kept pushing, got themselves all killed. And then the enemy team counter pushed, and then we were able to selectively snipe uh, people who were issued because the Duke of York was going to possibly go down the middle and grab the, the, the lower central cap. They would have gotten into the A section. They would have stopped those points. They had got the D bit. We were giving scout for our Benson so we didn't get killed off and we were kind of helping going after those kind of things. So we're, we're basically where we need to be helping who we need to help when we need to help them. Uh, and it worked in our favor and we uh, got the win. Anyway, I hope that's been a helpful guide to playing the Hiryu. Now, yes, we didn't play against the Saipan, and yes, we didn't show what to do when the enemy has a heavy A. Now, I do have videos on that in the, in the CV tutorial, but just to go over in brief, if you come across a Saipan, because I know this is going to be asked a lot in the comments, the enemy Saipan is going to try and strafe you a lot. He's going to try to do head-on strafes, he's going to try and do exit strafes. You have to be careful. Use your dive bombers, drop the payload of the dive bombers, fly off and scout. Scout on different various points of the map, try and lure his fighters away. He only has two of them if he's 2-2. Two, two. If he's 3-0-1, and that is a dive bomber and three fighters, he cannot have any offensive capability. You need to husband your planes, use them over friendly AA, and just wait for any opportunity over the long haul game. It's going to suck, but he can't bomb and you can't bomb. Although he's going to try and drop on the dive on the destroyers, but still, when it's two two Saipan against a two 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 hear you, you need to use friendly as best you can. You need to know that he's going to come in and strafe you, so maybe head on strafe him or pull away or follow him into AA. Know that he will click on your plane and he will then exit strafe and try and strafe with another plane, or know that he will exit strafe and try and come back, or know that if you click on his plane and you have friendly bombers flying past to get to a target, he will exit strafe into the bombers. Do not fly bombers next to fighters that are locked or counter dueling. You need to take a wide berth and go around. These are lots of things that you learn with experience. The Saipan is not as 
like god mode as people think it is yes the plinths are fast and yes they got a lot of strafes and they can exit strafe but if you know the strengths of the side plan and don't play into it play defensively play patiently you can outplay him in the hero you can do better spotting you can do better strikes if there's a lone destroyer if the fires are all over on one side and you can have your two torpedo bombs on the other side and you can get that kill or wound that destroyer like we did this game early on it makes all the difference and that's why i would still take care of you if it was tier 7 ranked anyway thank you very much for watching if you haven't watched the previous videos, go ahead and do them in the Think playlist. Coming up next will be the Shokaku, and then we'll follow obviously on with the title How Cure You. And uh, if you've got questions or whatnot, please uh, ask them down below, and uh, I'll try and answer them as best I can. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.